This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 267. Have writer's block? Three easy ways to generate ideas for your content by Aaron Blasky of aaronblasky.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host here and your narrator reading to you every single day of the week and that includes weekends and holidays. And we always love to hear from you if you have any ideas for future shows. So if you have topic requests, come visit oldpodcast.com to share them. That's oldpodcast.com and let us know what you think. And with that, let's get right to our post from Aaron as we optimize your life. Have writer's block? Three easy ways to generate ideas for your content by Aaron Blasky of aaronblasky.com. I remember a phone call I had with a client once, and we were chatting about a list of 10 to 15 blog post ideas that I had created for her. She asked me where I came up with those ideas, as she figured some people would struggle with creating a list like that, specifically in an area that they weren't familiar with. I told her that most of my blog post ideas come first from a session of inquiry. I asked myself, what would I like to know about this subject? Sometimes that means drawing on my past experiences, and other times it simply stems from pure, genuine curiosity. I love knowing how things work, so asking myself that question generally ignites a fire inside of myself of wanting to know more. That method doesn't always work though, as sometimes I'm left feeling stuck for ideas. When that happens, here's where I go to find inspiration for my content, whether it's a blog post, playbook, YouTube video, or tweet. One, Feedly. Feedly helps me generate inspiration for blog posts, vlogs, and eBooks on a regular basis. Here's exactly what I do to leverage Feedly for content generation. Step number one, set up a Feedly account. The first step in curating content to inspire you is to create an account over at Feedly. Feedly is an RSS feed reader, which means you can copy and paste the URL of blogs that you love or blogs in a niche area into the tool to generate a feed that makes it really easy to read 10, 20, or hundreds of the blogs you love. All of the blogs you subscribe to can be sorted into helpful categories, aka feeds, and once added, will populate an easy to read feed like the one you see in this post. Step number two, add your favorite blogs or blogs in niche categories. I'll typically add 25 to 50 blogs per category. This is because many of them have a slow publishing schedule, which means if I only have five to 10 blog posts in a category, I may not see new posts for some time. The goal is to get a really good feel for what's happening in the industry or niche topic so that I can pick up on trends quickly and without much effort. I look for blogs that update often and get lots of shares to social media, and if they are open, comments. Once the blogs have been added, I log in and refresh that specific category whenever I'm about to do any type of creative work for a client or my own blog. Step number three, browse the posts and process them. After you get into a routine of checking Feedly, it's a good idea to get into the habit of processing the new posts that appear. I like to leverage the read later or save to board options, as seen in the screenshot here in this post, as it lets me clip things that I know will be good for my own writing or for my client's writing. Anything that I know isn't a good fit or is more promotional or company-specific news-related, I simply use the mark as read and hide option, which removes them from the feed. Two, Quora. Another fantastic source of content inspiration is Quora. I use Quora to search up topics in my niche and review the questions that people are asking in that topic. For example, if you're a realtor, you may want to look up real estate as a category. Once there, Look at the top questions people are posting and which questions have a lot of engagement in the form of answers. I'd also highly recommend that after you create blog posts that are inspired from Quora, pop back over to the question that inspired your post and leverage some of your post content as a response to the question. That way, you can take advantage of the thought leadership that is established on that site when you answer questions as an expert. Three, Uber suggest. This one is a bit more of a hack, but it's still a great source of content inspiration, and you can leverage your competitors to save yourself some work. Pop on over to Uber Suggest and put in the domain name of one of your competitors. Once the report populates, click on Keywords under Traffic Analyzer. Next, take a look at the top keywords that your competitors rank for. These are the words that you'll want to start creating content around for your website in an effort to rank higher than they do for those search terms. This one has a dual purpose too, Not only will you feel inspired, but you'll also work toward better SEO rankings and pushing your competitors' rankings down in the process. 
The goal with this process isn't to make a list of blogs to copy from, but rather to take away enough new ideas and keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the industry so that you feel inspired to write and have a direction to write in. I found this to be an effective way to deep dive into an industry too, specifically when I worked with clients whose area of expertise falls outside of my general knowledge base. You just listened to the post titled, Have Writer's Block? Three Easy Ways to Generate Ideas for Your Content by Aaron Blasky of aaronblasky.com. And a real quick thanks to Netgear for sponsoring this episode. Do you need to upgrade your business's Wi-Fi performance? Is your Wi-Fi slowing down when you work from home because you're sharing it with your family? Do you wish you had your own secure Wi-Fi network separate from the rest of the house? Netgear Business's Wi-Fi 6 products represent the latest in Wi-Fi technology. They deliver unmatched speeds, coverage, security, and capacity for growing your business or working from home. They're also packed with features, like the ability to easily create a separate network at home dedicated to your work. Plus, seamless management helps you keep your guests and employees connected and your data protected, providing visibility from anywhere at any time. The world runs on Wi-Fi and small businesses and home offices are no exception. With Netgear Business Solutions, you get the very best Wi-Fi performance to keep you connected whether you're in the office, working from home, or on the go. Visit netgear.com slash business and use code OPTIMAL10 at checkout to save 10%. That's netgear.com slash business with code OPTIMAL10 at checkout to save 10%, and I have that linked in this episode's description. And thanks so much to Erin for letting us share her work here. She became obsessed with video games once she got her hands on a Commodore 64 in the late 80s, so you'll often hear her make comparisons and analogies to video games. Today, she's leading marketing at Fellow.app, a productivity tool for managers, and she curates productivity content on Dig's productivity namespace. For the past 20 years, she's been invited to speak on stages all around the world, including TEDx, and now more recently, virtual conferences. She covers marketing, community, and remote work. And you can also check out her book, Destiny, a love story about a video game, marketing, and storytelling. Come by aaronblasky.com for a lot more. That's E-R-I-N, Aaron, Blasky, B-L-A-S-K-I-E dot com for a lot more. And I have that linked in this episode's description. And again, thanks so much to Aaron for letting us share her work. But that'll do it for episode 267 here at Optimal Startup Daily. I thank you so much for listening each and every day. That is, of course, how we can keep this show going. So hope you enjoyed today's post, and I will see you back here again tomorrow for the Friday show, and that's where I'm going to have a post from Colin Wright, a popular minimalist and writer, and it's where your optimal life awaits.